Hey everyone, it's Claire Rogers from Itopia Coaching. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this week I want to talk about how to develop self-confidence. Now, there are some people out there that naturally have a disposition to believe in themselves, or they've been raised in a family that taught them from a very young age to have a strong sense of self-esteem, how they believe in themselves from a very young age. But what about those of us who were not raised to believe in themselves? What about those of us who have been raised in a difficult childhood and didn't gain the tools on how to believe in themselves? How do you develop self-confidence? Telling somebody who doesn't have self-confidence to just believe in themselves is the equivalent of telling them to just throw a dart on a board. It's not providing a tangible solution or a tool. So this week's video, I want to give three tips that you can do right now to help you start to develop self-confidence relatively quickly. First tip that I want to give is this, and that is let yourself have feelings. So if we have been raised in a difficult environment, we quite often have been told directly or indirectly to ignore our feelings, to not trust our feelings, to put somebody else's feelings over and above our own. And this impacts our self-esteem. This impacts how we feel about ourselves. So what I would say is listen to your feelings and validate them. Don't put somebody else's feelings above yours. This is one of my first tips. And it could be that for years you have learned to ignore your feelings or to not trust your feelings because you're constantly putting somebody else's feelings above yours. So it might be difficult to even start to identify what your feelings are. That's okay. What I would say is get yourself a notebook and a pen. And when you start feeling things, whether it be anger, sadness, happiness, whatever the emotion may be, write it down in your notebook and let yourself feel the feelings, but don't dismiss the feelings and say that you're not entitled to your feelings and don't say to yourself that somebody else's feelings are more valid than your own. No, listen to, acknowledge and let yourself have feelings. My next tip is trust your gut or trust your intuition, whatever you want to call it. You know that feeling inside that you may get that says that something's not right or something's off or something is making you feel uncomfortable? Don't dismiss that feeling. Trust your gut. Trust what your instincts, your intuition, whatever it is you want to call it, trust it. Your gut knows what's going on, so you need to trust it. We need to get to the point where we are actually listening to our gut rather than putting other people's opinions above what we are feeling inside. So that's the other thing I want to say is trust your gut. My third tip, and I believe is the most important tip that I'm going to give you in this video, is you need to get comfortable with saying no. You need to get comfortable with setting, committing to, and communicating your boundaries. Now, quite often, people who do not have a strong sense of self-esteem or self-confidence will end up agreeing to do things they don't want to do for a myriad of reasons to include fear of judgment. They don't want to be seen as being selfish or they invalidate their feelings over somebody else's feelings or they don't know themselves enough to know that they have the right to say no or they may say uh, that they can do something because they feel anxious and they're worried about the reaction they're going to get from someone. They're fearful that somebody is going to get mad at them if they say no. Or they may feel as though they're just going to avoid conflict by just saying yes when really they mean no. So in order to develop self-confidence, you need to get comfortable with saying no and setting boundaries. Okay, so you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's great and all, Claire, telling me that I need to set boundaries and I need to say no, but how do I actually go about doing that? Hey, I get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually refer to my coaching program, some of my notes, and I'm going to give you the tips on how to set boundaries. Now, just so you know as well, I acknowledge that you cannot say no in every single situation. You can't go into work tomorrow and just start saying no to everything. I'm saying you have to get comfortable with saying no in the areas where you actually have a choice, in your personal life, for example. Or maybe you need to set boundaries at work regarding working long hours, for example. But I'm not saying this is a blanket statement that you just start saying no to everything because unfortunately in life, we're all obliged to do things that we don't necessarily wanna do. Okay, so 
let me refer to my notes. So you need to realize that by setting boundaries, it's an act of self-care. It's also, it's going to help you build your self-esteem and your confidence. It's going to contribute to you feeling less stressed and less anxious. And the reason being is because you won't be doing something that you won't, don't want to do. You'll be validating your feelings and feeling good inside. Just think about it. How many times have you agreed to do something you don't want to do and inside you feel a bit crap for it, right? So by learning how to set boundaries and by saying no, that feeling of feeling crap inside is going to dissipate. It's also, it validates your needs. By you learning how to say no and communicating your boundaries, you're gonna to learn to trust yourself. You're gonna to learn to trust your own intuition as to what feels right for you. And you're gonna learn how to validate your needs. And then moreover as well, it's also going to improve your relationship with others because with other people, they will understand where they stand with you. They will understand what you're for and what you're against and what you believe in and what you don't believe in and what you do want to do and what you don't want to do. So it's going to improve your relationships. So, okay, so now what's the tips? How do you start setting, committing and communicating boundaries? Okay, so you need to learn that you can't control other people's behaviors or reactions. So quite often we won't say no to things because we have a fear of the reaction we're going to get. But unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about somebody's reaction. So what you need to get comfortable with the fact is that you may have a negative reaction and that is okay because you are not responsible for somebody else's feelings. So you're probably thinking, well, how does that work in real life? You say no and then you receive negative backlash. Somebody might have challenged you or said inappropriate words to you or called you bad names or said you were selfish. How do you react? All you do is you stick to your guns and you say, I hear what you're saying. I appreciate what you're saying, but the answer is still no. And you don't provide a justification because you don't need to. No is a complete sentence. So just remember, somebody challenges you. You just say, I hear you. I understand what you're saying, but the answer is still no. And eventually with time, people will understand where you're coming from and will realize that they can't challenge you anymore because you have boundaries and you have set them, committed to them and communicated them. Now, I appreciate that this is not going to happen overnight and it's easier said than done in some situations. You know, try saying no to a parent or a family member that you don't want to go to Thanksgiving or Christmas or birthdays or whatever it is. It's tough. It's especially tough with family. However, you need to know that you still have the right to say no and you don't have to justify your opinions or your feelings or your reasons. No is a complete sentence. Okay, so that was my three quick tips on how to develop self-confidence. So that was just to recap, it was to validate and acknowledge your feelings, have feelings and acknowledge them. Two, it was trust your gut. And three, it was learn how to say no. Set, commit, and communicate your boundaries. Now, those are just three quick tips. There's many things you can do to develop self-confidence. So if you want more help with this, please don't hesitate to contact me and I can sign you up to one of my coaching programs or you can join some one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And just know those three tips that I just gave you, it takes daily practice. It's not going to happen overnight. As anything I say in my coaching practice, there is no quick fix. There's no like magic button you can press and then instantly you're fixed. It's a daily practice that we all go through. So again, I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact me and please check in next week. Take care.